It's been a busy but grace-filled weekend. I'm at the Lake Forest Oasis on the Illinois Tollway, I-94 northbound. As I said last time, I was going to be heading from Kansas City area to Edwardsville, Illinois on Saturday. I'm pretty smoothly. As planned, I had spent last night at the Schneider Terminal in Edwardsville. I had to take a very expensive cab to town and back to go to Mass and go grocery shopping. I'm not, I mean, in the moment I was kind of upset about having to spend so much on that just for one round trip ride. But I'm also glad that I have moments like that to humble me and Help me to be thankful for all my blessings. And to remember that I'm a lot more fortunate than a lot of people who never have a vehicle of their own to drive. And I was also very grateful that a couple at the parish there, St. Cecilia's, where I went to Mass last night, generously offered me, without me even asking, to drive me about half a mile up the street to go grocery shopping so I wouldn't have to walk there. So, very grateful to them. Pray for them. Hope God blesses them. But then I didn't have much time to relax when I was at the terminal last night because I was assigned to make a delivery up here in northern Illinois in North Aurora for a 9 a.m. live unload on a Sunday morning. It's not something I ever would have expected to be assigned until it happened. And, and in my experience so far, it just usually isn't that much work to be done. As far as trucking is concerned on Sundays, it's usually a lot lighter. So because of that, I had to wake up at 2 this morning, so very tired, looking forward to getting a full night's sleep tonight. After I delivered that load, I got assigned the load that I'm delivering tomorrow in Green Bay. And after that, I won't have enough hours left on my 70 to do anything else until Tuesday. So, because I'm lucky that I got that load, because that'll allow me to spend some more time hanging out with my Spirit Juice friends tomorrow. Especially Andy and Chelsea getting to see them one more time before their wedding day next month. So, on um, Friday, I wrapped up my last life story segment telling you about how I felt God calling me to make some kind of a sacrifice last summer. At first, I thought it was going to be a sacrifice of having to work an embarrassing job that I didn't want. But over the course of last spring, I realized that there was something else that God wanted me to sacrifice. A couple weeks before Easter, the Spiritus team got a visit from Father Nathan Cromley, a priest of the community of St. John and the founder of Eagle Eye Ministries which is an organization that offers all sorts of Catholic retreats and formation programs for young adults. And he told us about all the programs that Eagle Eye would be hosting in the summer, including their annual Ecclesia Institute, which unfortunately, due to various circumstances, they've had to cancel for this year, but hopefully they'll have it again next year. Ecclesia, in, which you've heard me talk about a little before, is a five-week faith immersion experience in North Dakota. It consists of a three-day hiking trip, a three-day silent retreat, philosophy and theology classes, a beautiful daily mass and prayer routine, and all, just all sorts of community building activities, all for $1,900, which is a lot more than it actually costs them to run the program. The University of Mary in Bismarck, which hosts the program, is very generous in taking a financial loss to host the program and allow it to be affordable for participants. But there was still a lot for me, given that I'd never spent that kind of money on anything like that before. 
And I just never considered participating in any kind of trip or program that was that expensive. Having watched my parents suffer significantly in the last decade due to their poor financial decisions, but fortunately not fall into true poverty, I have become an extremely conservative spender. I didn't want to think about spending that kind of money on something that wasn't a true necessity until I was making decent money at a full-time permanent job. But at that time... At that time, I was in a position that I had never been in before. Because I was blessed with a full tuition scholarship at Drexel and made more than enough money from my co-ops and other jobs to pay off the loans that I took for freshman and sophomore year housing and cover all my other expenses, I was debt free. And even when it became apparent that I would need to buy my own car in Wisconsin right before Spirit Juice is over, I had enough in the bank to pay for a good certified pre-owned car and still have a small safety net left over. I knew that Ecclesia would enrich my faith life far more than going straight home after Spirit Juice and doing menial labor until I could find a better job. After praying over it for a while, I realized I really wanted to do Ecclesia and I felt God calling me to do it. The only problem was that it started six weeks after the end of Spiritus, and it wouldn't have made much sense to go home to Philly at the end of Spiritus, and then head back out to Ecclesia because Wisconsin is so much closer to North Dakota. I decided it would only be worth the cost if I could arrange to stay in the parish rectory where the Spiritus men live for those extra six weeks, and find a temp job to defray the cost of Ecclesia during those six weeks. By the grace of God, I was able to do both of those things. The pastor of the parish charged me $300 rent for the extended stay because Spiritus stops paying team members rent at the end of the year of service. And the temp job that I got kind of screwed me over by heavily cutting my hours after initially telling me I would be on full time. But it all worked out in the end. As disappointed as I was about the cutting of my hours, I still made a decent amount to put toward the cost of Ecclesia and was never in any real financial trouble. At the same time that I was applying for and then working this temp job, I was also still looking at a couple possibilities for my next full-time job. If all else failed, I was planning to apply to be a front desk manager at one of Drexel's residence halls as soon as one of those positions opened. I knew that job didn't pay well, but I was qualified for it, and I already had good rapport with Drexel's residence life staff, and in my mind it would certainly be better than a menial minimum wage job. I also applied for a job as a hall director for an international student residence at a Catholic high school near Philly. I wasn't checking job listings very often when I came across this listing, because as I told you, I doubted that I would find anything with a Catholic employer that I was qualified for. But I had the qualifications for this one, so I figured it was worth a try. It would most likely be just a one-year job, but it would look great on my resume, and would likely increase the vocation director's confidence in me so that he might let me apply to the seminary the following year. So I applied and had a Skype interview during the final week of the Spiritus year, the week before I started working the temp job. And then I didn't hear anything from them for three weeks. I assumed they had chosen someone else after a couple weeks had passed, so I was surprised when they emailed me to schedule a follow-up interview. The day after the second interview, they offered me the job, and I accepted it after taking a day to pray over it, which was really a little more than a formality because I pretty much already knew there was no reason I'd decline it. I was just so happy to be done searching for a job and to have found one with a Catholic employer after it seemed like that wasn't going to happen that year. It was especially relieving to know I could focus entirely on the community and spiritual life of Ecclesia and not be distracted with job applications during the program. After I got that job offer, I had two and a half weeks left working the temp job in Wisconsin until Ecclesia started and because they were cutting my hours so much, I had an abundance of time to pray and reflect on what I had learned since moving to Wisconsin. I think my biggest spiritual growth was in humility, especially learning to unite my will to God's will, and not becoming attached to my own vision of what I think God's will for my life is. 
my spiritual director last year dispelled some of the misconceptions that I had about religious life, and he helped me to open up my heart more to that and all vocational possibilities. I also got a lot better at embracing suffering and not running away from it. Before I learned these lessons, I wasn't discerning my vocation as well as I should have. For one thing, my desire to be a diocesan priest had some very selfish motives behind it. On one hand, I really did want to give my entire life in service to God and his people, but part of me also really wanted to be called to priesthood instead of a lay vocation because I knew that would mean a lifetime of guaranteed personal financial security as I would never have to raise a child or pay rent or mortgage. Of course, I already told you a little about how and why I'm so conservative with money. Knowing that lay Catholic ministry jobs usually don't pay well, and having read many stories about hardworking parents drowning in debt because of a medical condition their child was born with, or something else totally beyond their control, I felt for a while that the crosses of marriage would be much heavier for me than the crosses of priesthood. I've been happily loving Chase Lee for over five years now. I still feel a normal, healthy amount of attraction to women, but I know now that lifelong celibacy would be no sweat for me. But having serious financial hardship as a layperson, part of me is still so afraid of that, even as I try harder every day to trust God to provide all that I need. In the past year, I've taken more leaps of faith than ever with my financial security, and God is taking care of me just fine. Even if I ever do fall on harder times, I take comfort in knowing that Jesus is closest to the most deeply impoverished among us. I still need to edit Friday's video and hope, hopefully try to upload that and maybe also this video if the Wi-Fi here has enough bandwidth. Till next time, please keep me in your prayers and I'll keep you in mind. God bless.